Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Day in the Life of Vintage Classic Specialist for Friday, June 7th. How did we get here? Anyway, today I mostly continued to work on the 55 Beetle. Uh, as you can see, it's back on the ground. So a uh, few things at the back of the car. Yesterday I hadn't put the drums on it yet. So this morning I went ahead and put the drums on, got them all torqued down. Uh, added transmission oil to the transmission, lost quite a bit. Uh, since I had to replace the rear axle seals, usually a decent amount leaks out when you pull those all apart, especially with the car up in the air and the axles are kind of tilted downhill like this, um, you know, a bit lower than the transmission, a, a lot runs out. So I probably added, uh, I don't know, maybe a quart and a half or so. Anyway, went ahead and topped that off and put the car back together. We bled the brakes. Uh, brakes feel pretty good on here. The other thing though that I did was I started researching. Um, the owner is interested in going back to wide five. So I think I mentioned yesterday, this is a 62 chassis. So it's a, a wide five chassis, but back in the day he wasn't able to, um, basically a Ford wide five disc brake kits, which were quite expensive uh, 20 years or so ago, and there were pretty limited options. So he went ahead and did four lugs so we could have disc brakes, which I understand, but now he's wanting to go back to wide five to get uh, the correct look. And so part of the challenge with this car is, is that the rear brakes are totally 68 and up. And so basically what he did was he swapped to 68 and up brakes. So backing plate, everything on there is 68 and up. And then what you can do is on these cars, um, including uh, 62, the axle is quite a bit shorter. So if you just cut the snout short on a 68 and up four lug drum, then boom, it fits on a, on a short axle, uh, swing axle car. So anyway, that's kind of the challenge though, is the brakes are about 10 millimeters wider than wide five brakes. And so you can't just slip a, a wide five drum on there and call it a day. So I did some research and some reading and it looked like one option was to put Thane rear drums on, which are five lug wide five. And they pretty much bolt right up from, uh, from what I've been told in the research that I did. I actually confirmed this also with Jason at Air Cooled Vintage Works, uh, who I get a lot of parts from, and he said, yeah. And so those drums are pretty readily available. And so I think that's probably the plan. Again, the owner's interested in going back to wide five. So that would be the solution for the back. And then for the front, we're probably just gonna put a whole new wide five disc brake and drop spindle kit on there. He does also want, or is interested at least in wheels and tires. He's going to go with the mobile wagon interceptors, which pretty much look like a, an alloy version of Porsche 356 wheels. And he is, as I might've mentioned yesterday, wanting to, to kind of move the car in a direction of, of a car that handles kind of like my, um, my red 55 there, the autocross car. And so He's got a stock width beam on here right now. And so you can see with the drop spindle disc kit he has on now, the wheels are pushed out pretty far. And so if we were to go, and these, I should mention, these are uh, narrow rims. These are, I think, four and a half inch wide stock width. So ideally he would be able to run a five and a half inch rim on the front and then run like a 185 or a 195, get some meat up here versus the 135 that's on here now. So. Um, I went ahead and got him an estimate for putting a two inch narrow beam on here, which will bring the wheels back uh, inboard and allow us to put a five and a half inch wide wheel in front. And so he's kind of mulling that over now. I got him a quote for pretty much doing all this stuff. Uh, and let's see what else. Uh, adjustable spring plates on the rear so he can kind of fine tune the rear suspension. I run those on the red car, uh, really nice, kind of lets you really dial it in left to right and, and just the overall height. So yeah, I worked him up an estimate for doing a bunch of stuff like that. So we'll see what he comes back and says as far as what he wants to do with all that. In the meantime, like I said, we bled the brakes, got the car back uh, roadworthy. 
checked the timing, timing was fine, messed around with the carburetor a little bit, got it I think running and idling a little bit uh, better, and took it for a test drive. Uh, I think I forgot to mention yesterday, the motor is a 1641, so a little bit bigger than a stock 1600. It's got a cam in it, I don't think he said what, but bigger, bigger than stock. And it's got a little small header on it, and this thing rips actually this is a pretty peppy little little 1641 i was impressed actually at how how this thing runs so yeah had a had a fun little drive in it seems to be running fine stopping fine all that good stuff so that was pretty much it for today on this car the only other thing i did today just a small thing on the gear i did get the seat belts for the car and installed them so they're in now, it came out pretty nice. These are actually retractable seat belts, so they don't just, you know, flop around when you, uh, when you take them off, they actually pull back, unlike the seats, uh, seat belts that came in this car. So yeah, nice little upgrade there. And the car, as it came from his dad, only had lap belts in it, which I think may actually be worse than no seat belt, because when you only have a lap belt, if you were to rear end someone or something, it basically catapults your face into the steering wheel or the passenger's face into the dash so it's got fully retractable shoulder harnesses in it now and other than that did some found out some interesting things about the seats for this so somehow the customer supplied two driver's side front seats for the bus and a couple differences one is the actual shape you can see how the bottom area here kind of goes up like that if I can get a better shot of this see that shape right there so there's a definite left and a right because of that shape but the other thing is if you look at this seat mounting area versus this one you'll notice that the driver's side is a lot wider by several inches so the driver's side seat of which he had two 100% will not work for this side. So I spent quite a bit of time on the phone with him and talking back and forth, trying to figure out what was going on. Uh, he he was kind of surprised that he had the wrong seats, but uh, anyway, so he's working on it now. He's trying to get an actual correct right-hand seat for this so we can go ahead and continue upholstery at Octavio's shop next door. So. Yeah, I kind of spent a lot of, lot of time today on, on that little issue, trying to figure out how to iron that out with the, uh, the customer. So, yeah, just one of those things. Anyway, that is it for today and for this week, guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you Monday. Bye.